Hi. So I'm sure there are some of you that are surprised by the title of this week's video, and I know that there's a handful of you who are not because you saw that one micro viral TikTok. <laughs> but yeah, I am officially not a teacher anymore. Um, and let's talk about that. For those of you who have randomly found this video, um, a little background on me. My name is Kimi. I am a Canadian who lives in Seoul, South Korea. And until a few days ago, I taught uh, at a private kindergarten, a hagwon, um, here in Seoul. But I don't anymore. Um, so yeah. If you want the like too long didn't read version of things, I am a Capricorn. which says a lot. I think to explain where I'm at now, we have to go back like past the beginning. We have to like rewind a little bit to before I actually moved to Seoul. And I know I've mentioned it a couple of times, but it's important to know that I used to work in, I guess you could call it like corporate America, even though I'm Canadian, it's not really corporate, but I used to have an office job, but like a very specific office job. I worked in advertising at an advertising agency. And if you yourself work in advertising or you know anybody who works in that industry, um, it's it can be a lot of fun. And if you are someone who likes like fast paced and challenging environments, then advertising might be like a really good place for you. So in that job, like I worked, you know, very intensely for about three and a half, four years. And I had a lot of really great growth opportunities from the specific agency that I worked for. Cause it started really small. I got in when it was like very, very small and just a bunch of senior leaders. And then it like blew up and now it's like really a very successful Canadian agency. And so being a part of that process, like really gave me an appetite for personal development. <laughs> when I moved here, I knew that I needed a break, but I wasn't necessarily sure that I wanted ultimately to completely change the trajectory of my career. And that's important. Basically after, after four years-ish, a little less, um, of working that intensely <laughs> in Toronto, um, I started to question whether or not that is, is what I really wanted to do um, because I basically started doing it right out of university and I didn't know anything else. And I also only worked at that one agency because it very quickly became like a family to me and I was really happy there. And so it was never me questioning like, whether I wanted to be at that agency necessarily. It was more about whether or not this sort of like really intense um, career <laughs> was where I wanted to put my energy for like the rest of my life. Because advertising is also like notorious for um, causing young people to burn out. And then you don't find many people that are like necessarily like older really working in advertising. I don't know, everyone seems to be like very young or very young blooded. Long story short, I was not convinced that that level of intensity of a career was going to be sustainable for me. Um, and that's just a fancy way of saying that I basically burned out and <laughs> I needed to find something else. I wanted to find something that was, first of all, just like not as intense. And second of all, was more like socially and emotionally rewarding. And so that's why I ended up sort of looking up teaching and I had some friends who were doing it and they talked about how it, rewarding it was for them. So I wanted to check it out for myself. And you know, I did after interviewing and kind of doing a lot of soul searching, realized, haha, <laughs> soul searching, realized <laughs> that, you know, it was something that I really wanted to try because I knew no matter how intense a hagwon would be wherever I ended up, um, it would be less intense than an advertising agency. I'm sorry, that's just fact. Um, so I knew I was gonna be able to like take a step back in terms of how much I had to commit to my actual job and be able to spend more time building myself. Um, and then at the same time, I would also be able to like really positively impact the life of like a child or many children by teaching them a second language, which is such a valuable, um, a valuable thing to have regardless of what language it is, if you speak to that is like incredible. And I'm very, very jealous of you. And after a year, um, it was exactly what I wanted it to be. 
but then I realized it filled one sort of gap in my life, but then another one sort of opened up because very quickly I realized that there is no room for advancement. And I am someone who is very driven and, and um, personally motivated and I have goals and things that I want to achieve and benchmarks that are important to me to hit in my life. And a lot of those are tied to my career. And so I just kind of looked around and realized that it was probably the best teaching situation I could have been in. And I'm so grateful to my school and the kids and all the other teachers because they made it a wonderful experience. And so in the same way that when I left my advertising job, it was not at all about the agency why I left. It's the same thing here. The reason why I'm leaving teaching has nothing to do with where I work or who I work with, but it both situations have 100% to do with like me and finding myself because I'm only 27 and a half, um, but that's still so young and I it's okay for me to kind of put my toe in different pools and figure out what I want. And now a year and a half in, I realized that teaching is just not what I want. So <laughs> that is ultimately why I have decided to leave because this job just doesn't afford me the um, opportunities to grow. The only promotion that's really ever considered for a teacher as a foreign teacher here would be to become the head teacher to kind of be in charge of all the other teachers but at the same time um it's not a huge jump up but it is like significantly more responsibility from the people that i've interacted with who are or have been head teachers so you know that's not super attractive to me um whereas i know if i go back to an environment like advertising or communications in general, that there will be opportunities even here in Korea for me to advance my career, which is ultimately what I've done. So, so if you did see that TikTok, um, you'll know that I've actually accepted a position at a PR firm. So yes, I'm so stressed talking about this because I do like part of me does feel um, guilty. I worry that I won't be able to help support you guys with like the most up to date sort of relevant content specifically tied to teaching. A lot of what this channel was founded on, founded, um, what the videos I first started posting were all about teaching because that's what I knew and that's what I was doing. And so I know a lot of you have subscribed to me for that kind of content. Please don't um, hesitate to talk to me about teaching because I will always continue that conversation. Um, but, I, but I do have to let you know that, you know, moving forward, there probably will be less teaching videos on this channel, so. Um, it's been like a pretty intense uh, three months sort of getting prepared for the transition. I had to go through a lot to get my new visa organized. Um, there's also the whole process of like how I found the job and um, what that was sort of like. I, by the time you see this video, I'll be living in a new apartment. So house hunting here has been not the easiest thing in the world. Um, so yeah, so I have a lot of content prepared just like in general about um, the whole transition and how my life as a foreigner has changed here because honestly it, it's it's uh, quite a big a big difference I was blissful in my ignorance <laughs> because now you know I'm completely on my own like which will be a great it will be a great learning experience for me but obviously in like a more corporate job they're not as um, like entwined in the foreigner's life, I guess. I mean, some schools are also pretty removed, but my school was like, you know, very, very supportive of us. And obviously they do things like they just manage your housing. So like, I never had to like contract my own internet or like figure out where I get my utilities bill from. Like 
you know, that, that was all dealt with by them. But now, <laughs> you know, my name is on the lease of an apartment and I have to deal with those things. So it's gonna be a, maybe like a little bit of a rocky start. If you are interested in um, continuing on this journey with me as like a foreigner post teaching life, then I would love to have you. Um, if you have any questions, like more questions about why I left teaching or, um, you know, if you have any questions about this new chapter in my life, then feel free to leave me a comment below or slide into my DMs, whatever feels most comfortable for you. Um, I will continue to make videos throughout this time. <laughs> I'm very stressed about it. Can you tell? I'm surprised my chest isn't like bright red. Anyways, that's everything for today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I post new videos every Sunday about my life here in Seoul. It might be about my job. It might be about my love life. It might be about who knows what, but I hope you join me for the ride and have a great week. I'll see you next weekend.